of our praise oh, oh, oh you are worthy of my praise I call you Jesus you are worthy of my praise oh, oh, oh you are worthy of my praise I'm sure you're wondering what inspired the worship mood I like to also remind you Every first Wednesday of the month on this platform, we honor God with worship. We make sure that we start off by adoring Him, by showing our admiration of who He is to us. And so today, we're going to have the uh, presentation as a two-edged sword. We're going to have the Word because we're breaking scriptures, and we're also going to have worship. I'm sure you'll be excited about that. Please make sure you are in spirit throughout because as we close with worship, I know the heavens will not just open. God will speak over you afresh. He will give you what he will use to lift you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Okay, so we're going to continue today with our breaking, our study. Basically, corporate Bible study, that's what we do. Our study of the book of Philippians. We started from chapter 1, and at the last session, we concluded from verses 27, and uh, from verses 27 to 30, was what we looked at the last session, where we looked at using our gift of salvation to come together in unity of spirit, to strive against adversity, to strive against opposition, to preserve our spirituality, to make sure that whatever we're enjoying, the enemy does not make us lose it. Our objective today is very simple, that when you draw your spirituality, you also develop the personality, particularly humility to maintain the flow so that as the church, as the body, as the gospel adds grace to you, you also make sure you add value so that that grace will be available for others to draw from. We are looking at the second book of the book of Philippians and um, my focus today is on humility, particularly humility in our spiritual community. But before 
we start off. I have a big question for you. In your community of the spirit, your spiritual community, would you personally, from your experience and exposure, would you say that there's love there? Let me bring it up. In your church, would you say the love of Christ is genuine and real and available and it flows? And would you consider that affection, if you feel it, cared for? Would you consider it strong enough to override your irritation every time you feel like moving away? Do you consider the lovely, the pleasant experiences you have drawn when offenses and distractions come and you feel in the present, hey, I've had enough here. Do you remember the blessings you have drawn as a check to override your decision even though you feel irritated in the present? Okay, that's just a big question for us. Um, as we go for that, my prayer is that whatever questions that bother your heart, the Holy Spirit will resolve them for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And as a good reminder, please remember, this is a corporate Bible study. We call it breaking scriptures. What it also means is that you should, not that you may, you should please bring the questions that baffle you from your private study. One of the ways you know if someone is growing is that they'll be asking questions. Like they asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 17, why could we not cast out this spirit from this boy? Every time you attempt new things, Things that are more than you, stronger than you, you will need enlightenment and counsel so that you can resolve whatever is waiting to embarrass you. My prayer is that whatever the circumstances this year, you will be strong in spirit and you will overcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2, don't forget, our focus today, our focus today is humility in our spiritual community. And I'm just asking that you do one thing. You Pay back your thriving community with humility. When you have a community of the spirit, Christians, it's thriving, everybody is gaining, value is being added to your life. Don't rock the boat. Be humble. Don't ruffle feathers. Why? The moment you do that, you are going to break momentum. You are going to stop the flow. Your community, your church, your ministry, your fellowship is thriving, is doing well. You are getting blessed. You are getting married. Your job is running well. Your business is improving. Things are moving for you. Now, when you have a little disaffection and you are offended, don't be quick to forget all you have gained. Throw them out and walk away from that community of spirituality just because you don't remember, you have to remain humble. So we're using humility as a key to make sure we are retained in our community of Christians. Now, verse 1 of Philippians chapter 2, we're looking at verses 1 to 11 today, Philippians chapter 2. Verse 1, in verse 1, Apostle Paul writes and says, If, excuse me, therefore, Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2, 1, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy. I want you to please see here. You have to first clear your personal conviction or maybe doubts on the spiritual virtues that flow and are available where you commit your spirit to, to grow on that platform, in your church, in your ministry, in your fellowship. Find out if these virtues are there. It says, if there is, and it mentions those virtues. One, love, fellowship. It says spirit, fellowship of the spirit. Is the Holy Spirit there? It says affection, mercy, care. Do people care for one another? You have to, first of all, convince yourself that these graces, these virtues, these spiritual attitudes exist. If you don't find them, can you initiate, create, and add them? That's part of humility. Now, it says, it still says in that uh, verse 1 of Philippians chapter 2, uh, it says, Therefore, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, I like that word 
consolation. Now, consolation, uh, basically, uh, uh, how do I put this? If there's a competition and uh, someone it does not come first, they are not the maybe first run-up or second run-up, second or third, sometimes they have what you call consolation prizes. Mm -hmm. Usually, um, I'm looking for a nice way to put this. Just saying, don't feel bad that you lost. It's as simple as that. Now, when Apostle Paul wrote this, he says, if, there, if there's any consolation in Christ, he's saying here, what consolations do you draw as a Christian when on your platform you feel bad, you don't feel good. Don't forget, like I said, a consolation prize is just to encourage you, comfort you, and not make you look feel bad that you lost. You actually did not win. It's as simple as that, okay? Whether well, it's a consolation prize, to let you know that your effort is appreciated and celebrated. So, Apostle Paul is telling us here, there is consolation in prize. When people want to distract you, get you offended, how do you get into this consolation? What he's saying in essence is, before you take off and claim your right and feel offended when things go on, can you recall, can you remember the deposit of grace that you have drawn from that same place? This is consolation in price. Can you use that to pay back the negative? When you remember the consolations you have gotten, the comfort, the love you have gotten before. Now, when there's a challenge, can you use this past positive experiences to pay back the system by adding value, by staying there, and by not claiming your right or taking a walk. Okay? Now, in, same, in the same verse 2, he also says, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, I like this, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any fellowship of the Spirit. Now, I'd like to ask you, now, I'm focusing on community of the spirit. Christians, association, church is an association of Christians, fellowship, where we gather, ministry, whatever we do in service, that has a spiritual connotation or spiritual, and is seen as a spiritual purpose or assignment. Now, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer a community of the spirit or the social? Because Apostle Paul here emphasizes the fellowship of the Spirit. Which, oh, yes, which fellows do you prefer to flow with? Do you prefer fellows in church or fellows on the street, fellows in the club? Which one is your, is your priority? Do you prefer deep spirited friends in church or social fun friends? Which is your priority? We are looking at our community when it comes to Christianity, okay? And I'm saying here, Apostle Paul says, Philippians 2.1, there's a fellowship of the Spirit. Which one do you defer to more? I think that's left to your conscience. Don't suggest, review who you are, the way you are. Do you flow more with your friends that you drink together or you flow more with your friends that you pray together? Do you flow more with people that you study the Bible together or you rather pick the call of your friends that you discuss women together? Do you flow more with friends that you make money together but when you see those that will help you grow spiritually, you feel like they are disturbing you? Which one is your priority? It determines the state of your spirit. It's a reflection of your humility when it comes to spiritual matters. Okay? Now, in verse, uh, I read verses 3 and 4 of that Philippians chapter 4. It says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interest, but also for the interest of others. Now, Apostle Paul is saying here that you remain conscious you are in a spiritual community and because of that the expectation is that the flesh does not rule. I think that's the way I put it. It says here let nothing be done through selfish ambition. Verse 3 and it says in verse 4 let each of you look at not only for his own interest you love your neighbor as yourself it's good you watch out for your spiritual growth but you also make sure when 
and let me use in quote spiritual colleague when a spiritual colleague is not in church you check you when someone you are praying and you are praying intensely and you feel a neighbor standing beside you not praying just looking down checking the nails not interested Maybe the person is worried. Maybe the person has a body. Maybe the person has a problem. Maybe the person has a court case. You just never can tell. But you just pray and you shout hallelujah. Even if your neighbor is not saying anything, is not flowing in the service, sometimes you don't feel it's your problem. Why? You only look out for your own selfish interest. Can you also, while you watch, Bible says watch and pray, while you are praying, can you be watching your environment to be sure everybody is gay? That's part of humility. It means that you are not self-focused. You submit to the authority of Christ. And God, Christ says, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? So please, I'll say this, I'll say it again. The flesh does not rule in the community of spirit. I'll say that again. In the community of spirit, where you have a spiritual community in our gatherings, in our fellowship, the flesh does not rule. It is the spirit that rules. Okay? Now, in... Uh, let me take verses 5, 6, and 7. I'll read that together because of time. Don't forget today, we're worshipping as we break also the word. Apostle Paul now wants... Uh, I want us to look at this deliberate warning on our ego. How... Uh, we should make sure that we don't claim our rights. We don't, you know, <laughs> uh, claim our status when we come to a spiritual environment. It says in verse 5 of Philippians 2, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men. The man was saying here, deliberately work on your ego when you come to a spiritual community. Okay? Uh, it gave us the example of Christ. Christ did not claim his privileges as God, as a deity. He set aside whatever made him equal to the Father. Okay? It, 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 in essence, Christ was not full of himself. Christ was not thinking of himself. So, you think more of yourself, excuse me, you think more of Christ, not more of yourself. When you come around people that you are worshipping God together with, please, relegate the flesh. Don't let your ego play up. Don't be offended and remind people who I am. Your status is fantastic, but you don't emphasize your social status on the platform where the spirit is ruling. Like I said, the spirit rules in our spiritual communities and it is not the flesh. Anything the flesh will not allow you to remain humble. Okay? Now, in verse 8, Apostle Paul still suggests, you know, on ways that you can remain humble. He says here, and being found in appearance as a man. He was using our Lord Jesus Christ as a model for humility, as a standard for us. You know, just what I want to emphasize here uh, is to make sure that you intentionally take yourself through the humility process. I, I think I'll call it like the humility process in quote. Make sure you process yourself to become humble, okay? It says in verse 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he, notes that, our Lord Jesus Christ, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. I'm saying it again, process yourself to get and to remain humble. Now, in that Philippians 2.8, there are one or two high points you can pick on how to process yourself. You know, uh, uh, shall I call it humility process? How do you do that? It, it says again, it was found in appearance as a man. You know what that tells you and I? When you come to the place of the spirit, you don't claim your entitlements. You don't emphasize your ego. You don't display ego. You don't emphasize your right. Even if you're a professor, if you stand before a prophet, which you must prophesy, you don't bring certificates to the place of the covenant. That's what he's saying. It's okay. I'm not saying it's not okay. It's good. You need to have it. 
you, you need to, it, it, makes, it, it makes you feel good about yourself. But when you come to the cross, you drop everything at the feet of the cross. This is how to get elevated. I'll look at that reward in, in, in a few minutes. I hope we'll get there before we worship. So, number one, don't emphasize your special privileges, your entitlements. Jesus came as a man, but he did not take it to now as a man be equal with God. Now, again, in verse 8 of that Philippians 2, he says, he humbled himself and became obedient. He humbled himself means he was selfless. That is why it could be taken as a lamb of God to die for the sins of the world. Can you allow people to blame you for an offense you did not commit? And while they are blaming you, you know there's a Christian there who will see two mature Christians fighting. There's a young Christian who will see two mature Christians fighting. And you don't consider that your fight as mentors to the young Christian can affect the faith of that young Christian. You are shouting at each other. You are abusing each other. Especially when it's in church. What have you done? You have not humbled yourself. You have confused another soul. He humbled himself. He was obedient. Obedient means he took up the sin that was not his own. He accepted the wrong of other people. Can you do that? That is one of the ways to remain humble. Whether it is good or bad, we'll obey the voice of the Lord. The Lord is also important that is, as we do everything under grace, it says it was obedient and obedient, you know, unto death. I'm saying here, let's serve God by obeying him. And as you do that, allow God to take you on an extra mile, obedient unto death. Go the extra mile in your service. And he now says, um, the death of the cross. You know, the cross, crucifixion as it were, is considered the worst kind of death that, can, that you can, you know, uh, 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 use to take out a man. Jesus was nailed between two thieves. He was being indicted wrongly. People were shouting, crucify him. And even at that, they were indicting him wrongly, accusing him wrongly, as a lamb, he did not open his mouth to object. Why? It's not the people talking that matters, but the God, the Father in heaven, looking at him and on him to see if he will go to that cross, despite the shame. Like I said, if you know that there's a wrong indictment and accusation against you, and it will affect your fellowship, affect people, can you allow yourself to be blamed or wronged and you are quiet knowing that there's a bigger picture you are looking at on that God. I pray that God will bring us to this mature dimension where we operate in spirit above the flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, now let me round this off. I'll just read verses 9 to 11 as a go so that we can get into our worship experience today. Uh, and all I just want to encourage you with is to understand there's always a reward waiting when you humble yourself. So expect that reward. Verses 9 to 11, Ephesians 2, was Paul wrote and says, Therefore, therefore is a discourse suggesting that because you have done this, God is about to do something for you. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those under the earth, and of those, excuse me, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, to the glory of God the Father, to the glory of God the Father. I'd like you to see different dimensions of rewards that Christ got. Why? He humbled himself. Therefore, verse 9 tells us in Philippians chapter 2, God has highly exalted him. You know my prayer? God will help you achieve much more than you plan for yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Please get this blessing. God did for Christ what he could not do for himself because he obeyed God. He did not play to the flesh. He played to the spirit. 
He understood he was doing this for other saints. He was a firstborn among many brethren. He was conscious of the community of the Spirit, that whatever he did, whatever reaction, was going to determine the response and actions of other people. So he remained humble. He kept quiet when he was being nailed to the cross. He was not reactive. He was not cursing. He was not abusing. He was still praying for the thieves, even though he was numbered and placed in between two thieves. I'm praying to someone here. As God made him Lord, that every knee should bow to him. May God increase your level of spiritual authority in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible also says, of things in heaven and of things on the earth. You know what I'm believing God for? Your influence will spread. Your influence will rise in the name of Jesus Christ. Your business will expand. Your personality will be respected, dignified, and celebrated in the name of Jesus Christ. God gave him a name. A name. I hear for someone else. God will endorse your person and who you are. He will sell you to people. He said, this is my beloved son. Whatever you do, God will make sure that men favor you this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And you see, one of the best ways to humble ourselves is to go to the place where we can bow before the Lord, where we can prostrate before Him, where we can adore Him, where we can submit to Him. Like Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, there were elders around the throne. They removed their crowns and placed them at His feet. They humbled themselves by submitting their status and their achievements to let God know you are the one who made us. Without you, we can do nothing. And there's one woman in the Bible who typifies this dimension of worship with humility. The woman, very popular, uh, Mary, you must have heard of her, who broke her alabaster box, who used her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus, who used so much passion because she wept and the volume of fluid that came from her eyes were enough to wash the feet of Jesus. That is the passion of, of Christ. You know, Mary will express passion in worship. Maybe I should quickly read to you just to encourage you to use worship to humble yourself. Read to you Luke chapter 7, I read verses 37, 38 and 39 and we just go straight into the worship. Today is the first Wednesday of the month we honor God in a place of worship. Now, hear about Mary. Luke 7 from verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and they wiped them with the air of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Verse 39. Now, verse 39. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to him, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him. For, for she is a sinner. You know, that Pharisee, when <laughs> she said, Jesus, if you were a prophet, <laughs> should know that this woman is a sinner. It was indirectly saying here, we have, how do I put it, a spiritual consciousness of, consciousness of class segregation. We have this class segregation when it comes to our community of the spirit. This woman does not belong to our level, to our status. This woman should not even come close. Why? Jesus, as far as he were concerned, was his holiness. And the holiness should not allow people to come close to him. And the woman humbled herself with her air, her glory. What is God saying to someone here? You may feel proud, but if you want God to raise you, humble yourself. Jesus spoke on behalf of the woman. Jesus did not consider the fact that he was a prophet. He also, with humility, accepted a sinner to come close. There are some people that someone who has not bathed cannot enter their car. You can't give a Christian a lift who is not wearing the expensive fragrance that you are wearing. You, they can't come close. Why? They don't belong to your class. Please remember, in the community of the Spirit, you humble yourself 
you drop your class and you drop your status. Jesus knew he was a prophet. He, he allowed the sinner to come close. The Pharisee who invited him believed that it was better rather than humble himself and worship and get blessed. He was his speaking grammar or Jewish, whatever he was speaking. I'm sure that you get the point. And so today, I'd like you to just let God know you will not be silent because we'll worship him. This, that song, I love it, that says, I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship sheep you now now you know what mary was in an environment where everybody was watching looking assessing appraising our worship but she was not silent she was worshiping i don't know what you are doing now where you are don't get distracted even if others are not worshiping i will not be silent i believe as a Worship team leads us in worship. Your heaven will remain open and grace will flow to you in new ways in the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed. God bless you.
Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, the angels are singing, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, the angels are singing, Hosanna in the highest. I pray for someone as you are watching God today, please hear me. Angels will amplify your song in the name of Jesus Christ. You will hear new songs from heaven. You will be inspired in your spirit. Whatever circumstance that you are in today, God will make sure they are positive for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing negative will grieve your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing will distract your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for someone here. Anyone that opposes you, condemns you, distracts you, God will speak on your behalf against them in the name of the Lord. Mary brought an alabaster box. She expressed a fragrant oil. And the criticisms going on about her were challenged by Jesus as Savior. I pray in the name of the Lord. This year, whatever will stop your flow in spirit, whatever will dampen your spirit, whatever will quench your fire, whatever will cause your spirit to become grieved, God will take care of them even before you know about them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that this year, God will take you the extra mile. You will achieve your major goals. You will experience your own break this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Mary broke the flask. I pray that whatever you need to ask 
access whatever you need to get into business ideas whatever job opportunities you seek this year the barriers will be broken in the name of jesus christ when the fragrant oil came out of that flask everyone experienced it everyone enjoyed it i pray that all around you you will see things that will make your heart rejoice you will have expressions of faith of favor of blessings that will cause you to rejoice this year everything that you have planned to do this year god will give you the faith the fortitude never to give up on that better future in the name of jesus christ jesus said concerning mary what she has done will be proclaimed will be a memorial jesus spoke into our future i pray for someone here as jesus spoke into the future of mary he will speak into your future he will speak into every Every month remaining this year, you will meet with good in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall be no objections to your proposal. There shall be no objections to your intercession. There shall be no opposition that will stop you from making progress this year. I pray for someone. Your breakthrough this year will be phenomenal. You will experience God in a new way in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know what I'll say to someone here? Please. Keep worshiping God to keep priming your spirits to remain humble. And I believe God in a few years from now, you will look back. You will not identify yourself again. You will have so changed. You will know God has been my helper in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Thank you again for coming online, worshiping and receiving the breaking of the scriptures. But remember, this does not end until you honor God with your seed. He says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. The first fruit, your tithe, your offerings, they are signs you love God and they are signs you honor God. As you do your transfer, hear this, heaven will transfer more to you. Favor will flow to you more. Whatever it is that men are holding back from you, God, the Bible says God opens his hands is satisfied the deserves every the deserve every living soul God will open the heavens the hands of men will open the hearts of men will open and your band will be feared you will exceed your expectations blessings upon your offerings in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you thank you for coming I celebrate your better future in Jesus name amen <music>